A parked SUV containing gas cylinders and other flammable materials exploded on a residential street in New York City on Friday, damaging homes, other vehicles and overhead power lines, fire officials said. Deputy Fire Chief George Healy said at a news conference at the scene of the explosion in the city borough of Queens that there were miraculously no injuries reported. The dramatic moment when the vehicle exploded into a fireball was captured on doorbell camera footage. The fire department also posted a video and photos of the charred wreckage and the surrounding destruction, which included homes with blown out windows and heavily damaged cars. Healy said the explosion happened at around 6.45 a.m. in the South Ozone Park section of Queens. The destroyed vehicle was being used for construction work and contained a number of pressurized cylinders, one of which experienced a failure that triggered the explosion, he said. Some lithium-ion batteries were also being stored in the car, though they were not compromised. All told, five homes and five vehicles were damaged, Healy said. The general public should be very aware of the safety that needs to be utilized when we're using pressurized cylinders and lithium-ion batteries, he added. So please just make sure if you have these devices, they are stored properly and safely in a manner that won't prevent any sort of injury or damage. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney on Friday commented on the possibility of peace in Ukraine following the U.S. elections, efforts to send migrants arriving in Italy to Albania and the role entrepreneur Elon Musk plays in U.S. politics. Maloney made her comments to reporters on the sidelines of a meeting of European leaders in Budapest. Regarding Italy's effort to send migrants to Albania, Maloney said that there was enormous interest from her colleagues but there was also a bit of concern on the legal issue of what constitutes a safe country. There continues to be enormous interest from our colleagues. Let's say an attention that I consider absolutely positive and, in short, there was a bit of curiosity also about this whole debate, which concerns the topic of safe countries, said Maloney. A court ruling out of Rome had shortened the list of countries considered safe by law, meaning that Rome can repatriate migrants from those countries who didn't win asylum using a fast-track procedure. Maloney had previously slammed the Rome court ruling, and said that deeming countries such as Bangladesh and Egypt unsafe means that virtually all migrants would be barred from the Albania program, making it unworkable. She echoed those comments again to reporters in Hungary. According to some, governments are not in a position to define what a safe country is and so that, when, reading some, legal, judgments, you risk being faced with a reality in which there are no safe countries, said the Prime Minister, referring to the Rome Court ruling. As I have said many times, as everyone knows, in fact, this compromises every possibility of governing migration and of stopping illegal mass migration, she added. The agreement to outsource the housing of asylum seekers to a non-European Union member country, defended by Maloney as a new model to handle illegal migration, has been hailed by some countries that, like Italy, are experiencing a high level of migrant arrivals. Human rights groups and non-governmental organizations that are active in the Mediterranean have slammed the agreement as a dangerous precedent that conflicts with international laws. Commenting on Ukraine, Maloney reaffirmed Italy's commitment to peace and supporting Ukraine. As long as there is a war, Italy will be on the side of Ukraine, said Maloney. Western support is crucial for Ukraine to sustain the costly war of attrition, and uncertainty over how long that aid will continue deepened this week with President-elect Donald Trump's victory. Uh, ieri il protocollo Albania e l'immigrazione in generale non erano al centro della, del dibattito del Consiglio europeo, se ne è parlato, se ne è parlato nella EPC, nella, uh, nella commissione sulla migrazione alla quale io facevo parte, continua a esserci uno straordinario interesse da parte dei nostri colleghi e una uh, diciamo un'attenzione che io considero assolutamente positiva e insomma c'era un po' di curiosità ecco anche circa 
eh, tutto questo dibattito che riguarda il tema dei paesi sicuri perché poi chiaramente quello che accade in Italia coinvolge anche gli altri e quindi c'era un po' di preoccupazione su questo tema che secondo alcuni diciamo, i governi non sono nella condizione di poter definire uno, un, cosa sia uno stato sicuro, un, un, un paese sicuro e che leggendo i, eh, alcuni, diciamo, alcune sentenze si rischia di trovarsi di fronte a una realtà nella quale non esistono paesi sicuri che come io ho detto tante volte e come tutti capiscono di fatto compromette ogni possibilità di governare l'immigrazione e di fermare l'immigrazione illegale di massa. Ma guardi noi abbiamo sempre lavorato tutti per la pace, questo è corretto, dopodiché come io ho spiegato molte volte il, il, dal mio punto di vista per costruire pace bisogna, bisognava impedire che ci fosse un'invasione. Oggi se si parla della possibilità che insomma, si vada come tutti auspichiamo e come tutti abbiamo lavorato perché accadesse verso uno scenario di, eh, diciamo, di pace è perché gli ucraini eh, hanno avuto un coraggio straordinario e perché l'Occidente ha sostenuto l'Ucraina e quindi penso che questo sia l'elemento che fa la differenza. Dopodiché ovviamente vedremo come evolve lo scenario nelle prossime settimane, ma io ribadisco che insomma, finché c'è una guerra l'Italia sarà al fianco dell'Ucraina. Guardi, non so cos che cosa si intenda esattamente per impegno politico, sicuramente è una persona che si è schierata nella campagna elettorale di Donald Trump come migliaia di altre persone si sono schierate nella campagna elettorale americana da una parte e dall'altra, insomma sembra che sia nel diritto dei cittadini aderire alle campagne elettorali. Dopodiché io eh, posso dirle che considero, come lei sa, Elon Musk un valore aggiunto in questo tempo, una persona che sicuramente eh, diciamo, ha fatto delle cose straordinarie, delle cose importanti e penso che debba, debba e possa essere un interlocutore, una persona con la quale confrontarsi. The Red Eagle Aerobatic Team of the Chinese PLA Aviation University of Air Force completed its first adaptive training in Zhuhai City, South China's Guangdong Province on Friday. It is understood that the Red Eagle Aerobatic Team brought nine JL-8 aircraft to the airshow, including eight performance aircraft and one backup aircraft. According to different weather conditions, the Red Eagle Aerobatic Team has designed three sets of more than 20 aerobatic maneuvers for this year's air show.